Hi, welcome. We are talking about the zeros of polynomials. Um, this, co this topic really only talks about a few things. We're going to talk about how to solve for those x's. And um, we're going to do leading of coefficients that equal one, leading coefficients that don't equal one. And we're also going to talk about the upper and lower, uh, upper and lower bounds test. Some concepts to kind of recall, um, if you have to know what our factors are and like what that means is um, what are what, you know, like what are kind of multiples of a of a number, you know, factors of 20 would be 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. So we also have to recall synthetic division. That's in our previous video. We just learned how to do that. Um, that's also technically a recall from algebra 2. What is a coefficient? That's the that's the number, the constant in front of a variable. My leading coefficient is specifically the constant in front of the highest degree, uh, the variable with the highest degree. And finally, we have to recall what a rational number is versus an irrational number. An irrational number are the numbers that y'all are used to seeing, um, any number that can technically be written in a fraction or rash ratio form, which is any number as well that's over one. Um, our irrational numbers are numbers that can't be written in a true fraction form. Um, for example, pi or or uh, any other non-repeating or even a repeating, but like any other, well, no, a repeating can be written in fraction. My apologies. Um, even any other non-repeating uh, number like uh, base E or something like that would be an irrational number. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. So our first example is going to be a leading coefficient equal to zero. So um, the very first thing we'd have to do is identify the leading term and its coefficient. And if it's uh, I meant to write equal to one, and that's all my titles are going to be incorrect. My apologies. It's supposed to say equal to one. But you check for the highest degree and its coefficient. If it's one, then you list all possible rational zeros of that function, uh, which are the factors of your x to the zeroth term or your constant term, and then determine which, if any, are zeros. So we're going to determine it in one of two ways. You can either use direct substitution or you can use synthetic substitution, which we know is synthetic division. Um, the main thing you're checking is does your function value actually equal zero because that would be a true uh, zero of your function. So I have this example here, and this is f of x is equal to uh, 2x plus 1. And that simply, um, ooh, sorry, that simply, all we have to do is look for the highest degree, which is on this end right here, and its coefficient is 1. So I can go ahead and start with direct substitution. And I look at the factors, and what, what, which factors am I looking at? So real quick, I'm going to take a moment, and I am going to write down the reorder of this function so that we can actually see what that looks like. And so what that looks like is, oops, what that looks like is f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x plus 1. And so now you can see this was our leading term. Its coefficient is 1. And this is that technical x to the 0th term. And its factors are 1 and 1. And technically, negative 1 and negative 1 would all multiply back to get me a positive 1. So I'm going to test all those. Uh, I can test those factors, 1 and negative 1. And... Um, what we're going to use is direct substitution. So I literally just plug in 1 and negative 1. So I'm going to look at f of 1 and f of negative 1. So here's f of 1. I plugged in my uh, first factor and I got a 4. Well, that doesn't equal 0. So since that's not possible, that factor can't be 1 can't be uh, one of our possible or true rational zeros. So I plugged in negative 1 and we see that negative 1 is equal to negative, or f of negative 1 is equal to negative 2, and negative 2 doesn't equal 0. So what does that tell us? This, in fact, tells us that for this function value, 2x plus 1 plus x cubed, there, even though there were possible real zeros, there are no actual rational zeros. Uh, if you look at it on a graph there, you go like, hey, hold on, Ms. Jag, uh, the cubic function clearly hits the x-axis. But the reality of it is it does hit the x-axis, but it is an irrational zero. And I put that um, coordinate point right here to prove that point. At that 
at the zero, your X value is approximately this number right here, negative 0.45340, da, 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 yeah. And it keeps on going, which makes it an irrational zero, which is why we technically couldn't solve for it. I have one more example. And in this one, we're going to use direct substitution, or, or sorry, synthetic substitution instead of direct substitution. So what that means is I'm literally just going to do what we did last class, and we're going to use synthetic division. In order to do synthetic division, though, I'm going to have have to test um, the factors of my x to the zeroth term, which is this term right here. And I check. Here's my leading co coefficient. It's coefficient, or sorry, my leading term, its coefficient is 1. We're good to go. And I remember this is a typo. It should have said 1. So then I look at my factors of 9. Factors of 9 are plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, and plus and minus 9. And so those are literally just what times what gets me nine. And so I can plug that information in. There's all those factors of all that. I plug that information into a synthetic substitution, synthetic division to test. And one new term we're going to be using today is called the depressed polynomial. And why are our polynomials depressed? Because they're losing a variable. And so what that means is we're going to do synthetic division, and it's last line, that's our quotient, right? That's what we call the depressed polynomial. You can now test that polynomial for the rest of the factors. And so what you're in essence doing is you're just kind of like using that following kind of like a factor tree. And so once you hit one large factor, well, what are its factors? And you just kind of keep going. And so this is the quicker way to start testing your zeros instead of testing literally every possible rational zero. As we start testing that depressed polynomial, what we're trying to do is get down to the quadratic, we're trying to get down to x squared, because from there you can factor that out on your own and you can kind of solve for your zeros from there. So here is my uh, little setup that I like to create for myself. And the very first one, um, recall our factors were plus minus one, plus minus three, and plus minus nine. So the very first one I'm going to test, I'm just going to go ahead and test positive one. So this is one, four, negative 12. Uh, oh, sorry, my bad. I missed my own. Uh, there's a placeholder there, right? Because we have x to the fourth, x cubed, where's our x squared, and then here's x, and technically x to the zero. So I bring all that information down. I've got my own little cheat sheet right here, so I'm just going to, here's one, that's one, that's five, that's five, that's zero. Oh, sorry, that's still five. We can't add, apparently. Okay, that's five. That's still five. That's negative seven. That's negative seven. And this is going to be negative 16, which is not a remainder of zero. So that tells me that my um, positive one root is an impossible value. It is not a, it, it's not a rational zero. It could potentially be an irrational zero. Okay. So then we go ahead and move on and we test negative one. Okay, so do the same thing. And I bring that number down. This becomes negative 1. This becomes 3. This becomes negative 3. This is negative 3. This becomes positive 3. So this is a 9. This is a positive 9. And now we actually do have a remainder of 0. So this tells me that I have a root at uh, x or a, a negative 1 root. So that tells me that's actually x plus one would be one of my um, factor terms. So now that we know that, we can go ahead and test our next one. And our next one would be our plus and minus three. But instead of testing it on any old uh, polynomial, I'm going to test it on the depressed polynomial. So I'm going to write that depressed polynomial just real quick, just to remind you what this looks like. This would actually be x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 9. And this is the polynomial that I'm now going to test for my x um, uh, my plus or minus factor of three. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in. And since we're one down, I no longer need this row. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Now, for sake of time, because we are going to run up on our time in just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, negative three. It looks like I already reached my time limit. So I'll return back to you in part two of this video.